so you talked a lot about a, a nice overview of KRAS tumor biology and some downstream pathways that may be involved. Can you talk about the frequency of KRAS mutations in solid tumor oncology? We, we know that they are important in lung cancer. They're seen in other cancers. Just a brief overview of how common these are in, in lung cancer and other types of cancer. The KRAS mutation is one of the most common mutations in all solid tumors. But, um, and for example, it's almost half, about 40% of colorectal cancer, about 30% of lung adenocarcinomas, essentially all patients with pancreatic cancers. But the kind of KRAS mutation is different between different cancers. I mentioned earlier that G12C, which is the most common one in uh, lung cancer and lung adenocarcinoma, is highly associated with tobacco carcinogenesis. So although it's the most common one in lung cancer, it's infrequent in colorectal cancer because that biology is different. And we know now that the importance of KRAS in colorectal versus lung cancer directly relates to those subtypes. Yeah. For example, in KRAS mutated, uh, uh, KRAS mutated colorectal cancer, uh, inhibitors of EGFR, uh, tend not to work as well. That is not the case in lung cancer where it's agnostic. So subtype is uh, important and it varies a great deal between uh, tumor types. So let's talk about specifically lung adenocarcinoma, KRAS mutations. There are multiple subtypes, as you mentioned. What are the most common subtypes that we see I've, I, we, we've talked about 12 and 13. Are there other subtypes of mutations that we see? And it clearly matters now in terms of a therapeutic approach. Does it matter in terms of any other, in terms of tumor biology or prognostica prognostication of these, of these uh, patients? Well, the great majority in non-small cell lung ca cancer are codon 12 uh, mutations. And of those, as I mentioned, uh, G12C is the most common and now the most uh, actionable. Um, there are some data we can talk about maybe later when we get to therapeutics about it's not only finding the KRAS mutation and identifying what subtype it is that the oncologist has to worry about, but it's who are the traveling partners? Yeah. In other words, who, who's going along with this KRAS? Because there's some bad actors like <laughs> 53 and SDK11 and so right. forth that uh, are emerging as important partners, but maybe we will come back to that when we talk more about therapeutics. Such an important point. Uh, it gets to the complexity of KRAS. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Yes, there are subtypes 12, codon 12 and 13 that are the most common, but also who are the, exactly, what are the co-alterations uh, that may impact on outcomes and therapeutic selection? Um, so just- hey, Can I just add one thing, Ben? Sure. So um, one of the benefits of having a broad next generation panel yeah. is you get a lot for free. And what I mean by that, it doesn't matter whether you're looking for one gene or 300 genes, you get all this other information. So we get P53 status, we get SDK11. Um, you know, SDK11 tumor suppressor gene, there was nothing to be done about it. So you said, oh, oh it's interesting. Now it turns out these, these other things you find on next generation sequencing may be important. And if you were ordering tests one by one, or if you were even multiplexing, those would not be at the top of your list. You wouldn't have that information. So I'm a big fan of next generation sequencing, whether it's in tissue or blood. So I agree. I think you know we look for those quote unquote druggable or actionable mutations but the co-alterations we're learning more and more may impact, not just SDK11, but P53 with EGFR, uh, KEEP1. These are other mutations that start to tell a, a larger story uh, about the tumor that again may, may impact on outcome and may impact on what we do uh, for these patients. So I, I'm, I'm also a, a fan of, of doing comprehensive genomic profiling up front. So just, Nomenclature, KRAS G12C, what does this mean? Uh, why do we say G12C? Uh, and, and we're gonna hear a lot about G12C, and maybe just a 101 <laughs> as to what that means. 
Right, so the, these are named after the substitutions. So glycine for cysteine means G12C, yeah. uh, G12V, valine, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, so that's not quite so important, except that it alters the biology. Yeah. So again, in the case of G12C, this uh, glycine allows this protein to be constitutively activated. So again, your your foot's on the gas all the time. Yeah. Cancer cells, all they know is grow, grow and divide. Yeah, it's important. I, I think that helpful for the viewers just to know that there, are, you know, the de the names do mean something and it helps delineate tumor biology specifically and helps delineate therapeutic selection. So um, that's a nice overview.